Oh, hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. So hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, you've just met my new friend, Kenny. Uh, he introduced today's episode. Uh, so uh, in today's one, I thought what we'd do, we'd take a look at this uh, hazel that I collected from the garden. So as you might have seen from the, uh, the few clips that you saw at the beginning of this video, that tree is actually at my local duck pond and it's of a linden so the linden is leaning over and it's leaning into the or some of the branches are leaning over into the into the water of the duck pond and uh, this tree was a, a tree that I collected from the garden must have been about uh, I think it was about six seven months ago I collected this from the garden and uh, decided to try and grow it into a bonsai tree but it does have that natural lean to it anyway so I thought what we're doing today's video we'll take a look at some of these branches and uh, see what we can do with styling this and making it look like uh, a little bonsai tree. So how do you think about that, Kenny? Do you agree? I think he does. So if we take a, a closer look at this tree, we can actually see that, if we just spin this around so you can see it a bit better. You can see just here, we have the main trunk starts quite low down we can see we have a surface root here which isn't too bad it's not in a bad position especially for a tree that's leaning you do always want a a supporting root and if we allow that to thicken up over time that's just going to add to the the overall look that this tree has gradually you know the wind has been pushing against this tree and that root has had to thicken up more and more over time you might be wondering about this moss i've just placed this on here just as a bit of decoration i, I can't imagine it's going to be here as part of the final design but you know for now we can leave it on i think it is beginning to yeah root into the soil so i think for the time being we're we'll leave that but yeah going back to this root that will thicken up over time but if we just look at the trunk just in here we can see you have the main base of the trunk which is down near the soil level then it quickly divides into two you have one thick part of the trunk that comes up then you have a dead stump here a dead stump here and a dead stump a bit further back here then you have this uh, wispy shoot here. This is actually coming from behind. So if we just spin that around so you can see. This, uh, this is coming from just behind this piece of moss just in here. So if we allow that to grow, that would become another trunk. I'm not sure if we want that, so we might have to get rid of that one. And then if we just spin this back around in that direction, you can see that this branch here is taken off, that's gonna become the new leader and that's going up and up and up and up and up. So we would have to do something about that. And then if we look at the other the, the other um, branch or main division in the trunk line, so this comes up and then it, it comes up, it divides into three here. So it got, comes around here, you have uh, quite a few dead stumps on the end here. And then you have this branch that's coming off, but this branch has died. Quite an interesting bit of deadwood that one. So I, I'm not too keen to get rid of that. Then we can just see if we spin you around like this, you can see there's a bit of deadwood just here. That's a dead stump. Again, that doesn't really need to be there. That, that branch there is alive. And if just, if just swing this all the way around, we can see that this, uh, this branch here is taken off. That's pretty much become the new leader and that's going off and up there and there's plenty of buds on that one. And then if we just spin it all the way around so you can see it from this angle, we can see this branch here, this is alive, that's going off into the distance and that is uh, alive and has plenty of buds on it. So again, which branch do we wish to keep and uh, which branches would we like to get rid of? The first thing we're gonna have to do is get rid of this young shoot here because if I allow that to grow, that's just gonna become a third, or it's actually gonna become a second trunk. And I don't really want that, especially when this is already divided into two anyway, and you have some quite nice surface roots that are beginning to develop and thicken up. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come in here, go nice and low, just in there, and just snip that away with the concave cutters. And that's that shoot gone. So that cleans this up, the section here. Then we have these areas of deadwood, which you could, if I just grab my pliers, 
we could come in here with a pair of pliers and just tear this away. Now the thing is, when you have deadwoods, especially natural deadwoods, you need to decide, you know, how much of it you want to keep. Um, I'm, I'm always one for trying to allow nature to do its thing when it comes to deadwood. Uh, although I do every now and again carve in um, sort of gins and sharis, I'm not really one for using um, any kind of light lime sulfur or anything like that, unless it is a feature of the tree, uh, or you know, like a dominant feature of the tree. Uh, I think with a tree like this, where you just allow nature to do its thing, you allow the tree just to rot or stumps to rot, they can create very natural effects on their own, and uh, they, they can become quite a you know an interesting, beautiful part of a bonsai tree. So I think when it comes to this, we need to think, you know, how much of it do we want to keep? Well, we certainly don't want it to be this big. So let's just put the pliers on there just like so, and then just roll them around, just roll them around, putting that away just like so. And that's not too bad. Uh, it's a little bit, that's a loose bit anyway, so we can do the same thing in the other direction. We can put it on there and then just roll it around, break that off just like so. And that isn't too bad. Just peel off a little bit there. And yeah, I think this, it's all broken away. It's all rotten anyway, so let's just peel that away just like so. And I think I'm just going to go the full nine yards. Let's just take that away too. Let's peel that away. Just get rid of that. And then just allow this just to naturally rot away. I think that looks quite natural. It looks as though it's broken. It looks as though once upon a time there's a big branch there and that's just fallen over in the wind or a storm. And it all looks very natural. I think if we just spin it around in this direction, then we have this stump here. Now, again, that is rotten. I wonder if I could get my pliers on there and break that. Might be able to. There you go. Just twist it off, roll it around. There you go. And that breaks away really nicely. It's not a bad effect, but we maybe can get that a bit more, a bit better. So it looks a bit more natural. Let's just twist that about. There you go. And then it just looks like a branch is broken off. Again, you allow that to do its thing over time and rot, and that will become a very interesting feature. Then we have this branch just here, this uh, little branch just here. Do we want to keep that? Well, yes, I think I might. I think I might. Then we have this stump here. Now, I wonder if I can do the same thing. I wonder if I can get my pliers on here and just squeeze it and roll it over. And there you go. That's right to Berlin. This is a good thing about hazel. If you just allow it just to rot, allow nature to do its thing, you should be able to just put your pliers on here and just twist it around and break it away. And then it gives a really, really interesting, interesting look. Just put the pliers on there and twist it around. Just want to gradually pull it down. That's good. I'll be able to get that with my fingers. And I'm just going to, I'm right handed, so this isn't the best view for you guys. But there you go. If I just break that top section off, you can see. That looks like a broken branch, and that's exactly what you want. Very, very, very natural looking. So then if, if we move up this section of the trunk, or this part of the trunk, we come up, you can see it curves around here with quite a few stumps on here. Again, we do exactly the same thing. Just break it away with the pliers. Again, it's all rotten, so it just breaks away really nicely. You can have some really, really nice deadwood on this tree. It's really easy to create. Just put the pliers on and just twist it around. Most natural, easiest way to create really fine, good looking deadwood. And again, we can see this branch here is rotten. We can do exactly the same thing. Looks a bit like a rotted stump now, but if we just put the pliers on there, give it a good squeeze and break it off. Really nice looking break there. Looks very natural. Again, just put it on the base, twist it around, break it away, and you have a very interesting looking feature on the tree. Very, very easy, effective way to create deadwood on a tree. So then we have to turn our attention to this. Now this looks a bit ugly, especially with this shoot coming up here. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that, but either way, we don't want this on here, at least looking like that. So I think what we'll do is put my pliers just in here like so, just grab the end of it, and then just hold in the tree, just twist it and break, twist it and break, and then just twist it all the way around like so. And that creates quite a nice looking little gin. What I might do, if I can get my pliers in just in here, 
bit of an awkward area to do this. I'm just going to clamp it like so and then just twist it in this direction. Just pull it over in that direction, just like that. And then just pull it away. And there you go, you have a very interesting looking gin on that part of the tree. Might just take the bottom section away just with my fingers. And there you go. If we allow that to rot over time, that will become a very interesting feature. Right, so then the next question is, what are we going to do about this dead branch just here? Now, it, it, it is a nice dead branch. It does have some interesting character to it, but it is kind of crossing the overall viewpoint. I mean, it depends a lot on which side is going to be your front. Is that going to be the front or is that going to be the front? Now, ideally, I've always thought of that to be the front, but if this is the front, we have this branch, which is going straight back, which isn't really ideal. I mean, maybe if this branch comes forward, but again, you're going to have a cross in, in the, the branches coming through. And again, that doesn't really look that good. There's no point in putting any wire on this branch because it's dead and it won't set anyway. Do we need that one going down as well? Well, it touches the pot. I mean, this is quite a nice level to have it in the, in the, you know, in the pot. Uh, could I bring this up slightly when I come to repot it next time? Possibly, but, you know... It's quite nice now. The surface roots are quite nice. So if we did have it at this level, this is touching the pot. You know, as nice as that branch is, I think I, I would like to develop these. I would quite like to keep this, bring these down, bring that down, maybe possibly get rid of that and get rid of this. It's a bit of a shame, but it's not coming from a good, a good point. And if we're going to keep it similar, look into the, the um, tree that's growing over the duck pond, you know, that linden tree, it doesn't have a low branch like that growing on it. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to get the old concave cutters in here and get rid of this branch. So just get them all the way in there, nice and tight, just in there like so, and away with that branch. But right, so then comes wiring these branches. Now to wire these branches, I'm going to use this, which is four mil gauged wire. This is the thickest wire that I have and I think this would be plenty strong to wire this thicker branch. To wire the other branch, I was going to use this wire which is three and a half or three, yeah, three and a half mil wire. So that should be absolutely fine. That should be ample to wire this branch down. So the way that I usually do this, I like to use the hooked method. So I grab my pair of pliers. What I like to do is just grab the pliers like so and then just form a little hook just in the end just like so. And then what I do with that hook is I hook that around the anchor point. Now with this tree, we have a bit of an issue because we don't have an easy anchor point unless, of course, we do come in between, in between that branch, which isn't ideal, and I'm at risk of breaking that branch. But could I get that in there? Possibly. Possibly. Might just get my pliers and ease that anchor, that hook just like so, just to try to get that in there. Yeah, it's not going to be the best. So let's go the other way. Let's go like this. Why I didn't want to go the other way is because I have those buds just in there. Maybe if I go this way, like so, they go anchor that on there like so. Just ease your hook like so, like that. And then that, that hooks around there, just, and that's a good, now, anchor point for you to then get your wire and then wrap this around your branch. You can see you go around the back and it gives you a good anchor point. And now that's nice and strong as you come to wire this around your branch up here. Again, it's kind of fiddly because we're weaving it between these two big branches. As you can see, we kind of come up the tree just like so. so watching the buds because there are buds all the way up this branch. We have buds here, we have buds there, buds here and buds here. So I don't really want to knock off any of the buds, which means I'm going to have to take this coil slightly higher than I would like to, just to avoid those buds. Weave it in between the two branches. Ooh. That's it. That's good. We keep on going up. That's good. All right, so the next thing we're going to have to do is add some wire to this branch. So to do that, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap the, the hook around the second trunk just here. So I'm going to need quite a big loop in this. It's just like that. Maybe widen that just a tad. Because it's quite a thick trunk. Just like that. 
And what I'm going to do is just come in here just like that, wrap that around the trunk, just like so, and then wrap that underneath the, the, the branch, and then we come up and over just like that, just round, and then just gradually wire it around the tree. And again, just watching bud. So again, these coils might not be absolutely even. I know some people have suggested that you need to have your coils, you know, the same width going all the way up the, the branch of the trunk, but sometimes that isn't really possible because you have buds and, and other areas of the branch that you don't really want the wire to touch. And you can see with this particular branch, there are plenty of buds all the way up it. So you do have to make those allowances. And there's just a case of twisting that just up there. Now I'm not putting any wire on the, the thinner growth up top. Main, main reason is I don't really, this is going to grow. These buds are hopefully going to pop and grow next spring. All I'm worried about is bending these thicker branches. So now that we have the wire on, it's a case of bending these and trying to get some movement into these branches. Now, I don't really want a radical bend, but I want no enough of a bend that it gives it some interest. And it looks a bit like a, almost like a semi-cascade. You can see that's looking pretty good. I'm beginning, I'm beginning to hear a little bit of cracking, which isn't a good sign. So that's not looking too bad. That's uh, pretty good. I quite like that movement in that. And I don't really think I can go much more. I might just better go just a little bit. There is, it is starting to crack just here. So I'd be very careful with that. Oh, can we go a little bit more? Oh, yeah, just, that's quite good. I like that. It's a gradual curve over. Looks very similar to the, the tree leaning over the duck pond. I like that a lot. I really do. So that's our dead branch. So where would we like this one to go? Well, I'm thinking we want this one to just gradually, again, being careful of those buds. I don't want this to be quite as, quite as intense because it's going to look, I don't want it really to compete with this, but we do want it to come slightly over. And again, these buds on this branch, if they develop and they go up, it's going to add to the overall canopy. You know, you know, going back to that, that linden tree growing over the duck pond, yes, it does have branches that's lean, that are leaning over into the water, but you also have a lot of branches that are going up. So we don't really want to get rid of that. So I'm wondering if that is going to be enough. Again, I'm not liking this. Did it come back? Is there any benefit having a branch going that way or that way? No, I, I don't like it. I'm going to get rid of that one. So I'm just going to get my concave cutters in here. Let's just get rid of that branch, just like so. And tidy that up just a little bit more, make it look a bit cleaner. And that's looking good. And I don't actually dislike that. Now as for these, these longer parts, these longer branches, let's just spin this around so you can see it a bit better. So yeah, these, these branches, so I'm gonna leave these just to see which one of these buds grow and then we can just develop that further. So as it stands, I could, really care less about which direction this grows in because I'm more concerned about the buds and how they grow and develop. And then of course, then we can cut this branch back and then develop those branches further. So as it stands, this branch doesn't matter and nor does this branch that's just above. So it's a very dark, gloomy afternoon. The rain clouds are forming overhead. I think it's going to rain any second. So I think what I do, I'll let Kenny sign us out and I'll see all of you guys next time. So thanks for watching and as always, take it easy, have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one.